This video will cover the download and installation of VBS4 and the VBS World Server. Now, the first thing you'll be provided with by our support team is a product called License Manager, VBS License Manager. And the first thing you'll do is activate your computer using a ticket ID that our support department will provide. So you enter in this ticket ID here, just copy and paste it, and then run through the process to activate your machine to download and run VBS4. And then once you've done that, you'll click on the download button here. And this will actually retrieve the available downloads as a first step. So you can see on this computer here that I have a number of products activated here on the left. Obviously to download VBS4, you'll click on VBS4, and then you can select exactly what you want to download. Now this is quite different from VBS3 because you have your base application here, VBS4, uh, that includes the VBS World Server and a number of terrain packs, in addition to these different data packs, airfields, roads, and buildings. And you can select which uh, you want to download by just deselecting or selecting specific options here on the right. And you can click on the question mark to bring up a help page describing these downloads in more detail. So let's say, for example, I want to download the North American buildings, uh, global roads and airfields, and VBS4 with all of its insets, terrain insets, as you can see here. I would make the selections as you can see. Uh, this is 341.34 gigabytes of data in total. I would obviously need to change my download location because I don't have enough space. So I would click on change. Uh, and here, for example, I have a two terabyte drive uh, and I could select this folder instead, uh, which would download everything to the E drive in eVBS4. I would then click download. This would probably take a, a fair time. 341 gigabytes is a lot of data. Uh, another way to do that is to copy the links. If you want to use a separate download manager, for example, free download manager, you can copy the links to clipboard and you can just paste them into a different application. So these are direct links to all of the files that would be downloaded. But the easiest way to do it is simply click download, which will download all the files from the servers uh, directly to your computer. Now let's have a look at the downloaded files. So here are the downloaded files. In this example, I haven't done any of the buildings because uh, I just didn't have time to wait for that massive download to happen. But you can see here that I've got the VBS4 installation, World Airfields and World Roads. So to install VBS4, I would come into here and you need to make a decision if you wanna install VBS4 offline, which means that it will be a VBS4 build that's running kind of standalone with all of its terrain data loaded, or if you wanna install the world server, which would be done through this executable here. Now the world server, of course, is used in a battle simulation center. If you wanna centralize your terrain data in your battle spaces, you would install that. Uh, if you were just running a, a standalone VBS4 client, then you would run this uh, other VBS4 installer here. So the first thing we're gonna do is install VBS4 uh, world server on this computer by clicking, uh, double clicking on this executable. Now it will run you through the process of installing the VBS world server. You can click through um, you know, the various, uh, the, the EULA here, and you can select what you wanna install. Um, so you want to install uh, the actual build itself, the geolocation lookup service, so we can get addresses in the game. Um, I'll turn off uh, the checksum here and I'll turn off uh, the drivers as well, just for my install, because obviously I've already installed VBS on this computer previously. Uh, you would select the installation directory. In this case, I'm going to install it to the D drive. Uh, and then I would click next to proceed with the install. Uh, let's have a look at what that install will look like when it's finished. Now, when the installation has finished, you would go to your install location. So I installed the world server into DVWS. And these here are the files to start and shut down and monitor the VBS world server. But it's important to realize that within services VBS4, we have a full VBS4 build here. Now you can run VBS4 directly from within the VBS world server directory if you need to. Uh, but first what we're going to do is go back to our installation directory uh, because we also downloaded uh, airfields and all of the world's roads. And we're gonna to want to install those as well directly into our install location. So we'll go back to VWS. 
Now to do that, we'll go into services, VBS4, and run this VBS4 update application here. And then using this application, you would navigate to the folder where you downloaded uh, the, 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 the terrain data files. So in my case, that's gonna be eVBS4. And for example, we're going to look at airfields first, then we click install. And that will actually extract the airfields into this VBS4 folder. So that's completed now. Uh, and so now either the VBS world server or VBS4 running uh, as part of this VWS uh, directory structure here, we'll be able to render the various airfields that were just installed. So now let's have a look at VBS4 actually running. So first we're going to load up VBS4 completely standalone or in an offline manner uh, directly here. So we can run the VBS launcher and we can come here to VBS4 and we can select the offline configuration. You typically would wanna make sure that you're running in administrator mode. Uh, and in this example, we're gonna run in a window as well. And then we're just gonna click launch modules. That's gonna start up VBS4. And because this is the first time I've started VBS4, it's gonna take a little bit of time and we'll come back uh, when it's loaded. Subsequent loads will be very, very quick, 15 to 20 seconds. So VBS4 is loaded now. Uh, you'll see it uh, start up in this type of configuration. We can just maximize the window here, um, close the various help text that appears, and we can actually just navigate around, zooming in and out as needed now, uh, and use VBS4 as required. You will note that we're not connected to a world server right now. I started VBS4 in offline mode. Now what we're going to do is install the VBS4 client on a different PC uh, and then connect back to the world server. So I've copied the installation files across to an SSD now and plug that into my laptop, a second computer. And because this is gonna be a VBS4 client, I would simply run the VBS4 core installer here. So we can double click on that and just move through the process of, uh, of installing VBS4. So uh, obviously we have the end user license agreement here. We can choose what to install. Now I do not need to install these insets because they're gonna be streamed to this computer from the VBS world server. Uh, and I'm just gonna turn off the driver install because I've already installed VBS4 on this client before. We're gonna click next. We'll just accept the default installation directory here. Um, it's 104 gig. And as you can see, I've got enough space. So we're now just going to click through and we're going to wait for VBS4 to install and we'll come back when it's done. So the installation process has now finished and this is the screen we'll see at the end. I've now installed VBS4 onto this client PC and we can open our installation directory. So there it is, VBS4 installed on the client with all the files necessary. Now, none of the terrain data files are here because we're gonna download that from the VBS world server. Uh, so I don't need to run the VBS4 updater here. I don't need to install anything else. I can just go ahead and launch VBS4. Uh, so we come across here to the VBS4 page uh, and we can actually enter in the IP address of the location where the VBS world server is. And on my local area network, this is its IP address. Uh, and now we can go ahead and um, launch VBS4 once I've started up the VBS world server on the other PC. Now we're back on the VBS world server PC. And the first thing we need to do is start up the VBS world server services. And we do that by double clicking on VWS underscore configure that's going to uh, work its magic and start up the services that will stream terrain data to various VBS4 clients on the network. So this will just take uh, a little bit of time and uh, there we go, we've finished. So we can close that. Obviously we can check the status of the VBS world server by run, running VWS underscore status. As you can see, all of our services here are running. So the VBS world server has been started here on this PC, and now we can connect to it from our client. Let's have a look at doing that right now. So we're back on the VBS4 client PC now. We've still got our IP address entered here for the VBS world server. We can simply click launch modules. That'll start VBS4 up on the client. 
and connect to the VBS World Server for all of its terrain data. Uh, when you're connected to a world server, VBS4 starts very quickly. And just after a couple of seconds, we'll be at the VBS4 main menu. So VBS4 has loaded. You can see here we have an icon that indicates we're connected to the VBS world server. And we actually have a server status uh, window here as well. Now it's important to note that the world server isn't used only for terrain data. It's also used to store battle spaces, uh, as well as host network missions. So let's have a quick look now at creating a battle space uh, as well as streaming some data from the world server. Now we're gonna have a quick look at creating a battle space uh, when connected to the VWS. Uh, of course, when we're connected, we have a geolocation lookup on the, uh, the world server here, which we can use to search. Uh, and we can also see our various terrain insets that we loaded uh, on the VWS. Remember that this is the client here and we actually go to a location, it's going to download the terrain data uh, kind of at runtime as needed. You don't need to load all of the terrain insets on all of your computers uh, if you're using the VBS World Server and the VBS World Server will kind of download what you need when you need it. So here we are, um, the terrain is still paging in. This is Yukushima in Japan here. Uh, and we're just going to do a really quick battle space now just to have a look at uploading uh, battle spaces to the world server. So we'll come in here and we'll create a new battle space. So we'll just go test battle space, uh, save those changes. We're then going to come in and we're going to create a, a single unit in this battle space now. So we've just gone directly into the prepare mode, directly into the VBS editor here. Um, you can see the, the 2D map is loading in. We're going to quickly create a unit. And then we're going to uh, close this. We're going to save. And we've just created this new battle space here, test battle space. And we can see that it is already uploaded to the world server. We could go directly ahead and then execute that if we so wished. And a key point here is that the VBS world server is not just streaming terrain data down to VBS4 clients. It's a central location to store your battle spaces uh, and it also provides a VBS4 dedicated server. So I don't need to start up a separate dedicated server. I mean, I can if I want to, but uh, by default, you have one here on the world server that you can use if you need it. Of course, all of this is explained in the VBS4 documentation. I do recommend you review the deployment guide which is in the docs folder of VBS4 underneath your VBS4 installation. It will run you through the different configurations, including online and offline, talking about the world server. Uh, there are many ways that you can set up VBS4, many different types of deployment options, uh, and you should make yourself familiar with those. Of course, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact our support team. So that's it for this video. Uh, the next tutorial video will cover uploading uh, VBS battle spaces to the VBS world server, as well as managing terrain insets. Thank you very much.